So this is a 2021 Chrysler Pacifica with the 3.6 Pentastar. I have to remove the intake in order to get to the spark plugs and ignition coils on the front side of the engine. It has a misfire and they're thinking, and I'm thinking, that a rat may have chewed up some of the wiring. There was rat droppings inside the engine bay when I opened it up. So the steps so far that I've taken, I'm hoping that you'll be able to hear. I'm sure you can. But on the front side of this uh, intake, there is four of these small bolts. They're 10 millimeter. They hold the bracket on for the coolant. And, well, the coolant. Both of them are coolant. One is small, the other one's large. They also hold the intake to a bracket. On the driver's side, you have the EGR valve, which looks like this. It mounts inside the intake just like so. There is a gasket that is on the intake itself that seals up against the surface here. You have three 10, mil 10 millimeter bolts or nuts, and then you have three inverted Torx studs, and then a hose clamp. So that hose clamp needs to come off. This hose needs to come loose. You don't have to take it all the way off yet, but definitely get it to where you can take it off. Unbolt all of these, take these two inverted Torx loose, to be able to push that whole assembly away from the intake. Make sure you don't drop them because you will need them. <clears throat> Before you take that piece there off, you need to get the auxiliary battery out of the way. The main battery is here. The auxiliary battery is down in a hole there. And this is the auxiliary battery. It is a well, this specific one is a door cell glass mat 14. Two 10 millimeter bolts mount it down, and then you got a strap that is also 10 millimeter bolt. This is 8 millimeter. There's a 10 millimeter that holds that uh, resonator box down. It mounts here to the top of the intake. This is only press fit. Push this whole entire thing backwards, it'll pop off the grommet in the back. It'll come off of here and come off of here. You can take it all the way out, but there's no need in this instance to take it all the way out. You have the PCV valve tube connected here to the top of the intake. Push it down. You may use a pry tool to be able to push it off or a flathead screwdriver. <coughs> the intake map sensor it has a clip on it you pop the clip off push the tab down pull it off throttle body has a white tab on the bottom side of it you pull the tab out push the tab pull the locking tab out push the black tab in to unplug it there's also a bracket here on the the lower side of the intake that holds the, uh, the intake on you need to remove that inverted torques as well unless you want to remove the 10 millimeter that's further down over here on this side there is another I'm gonna say this is probably evap since it's not the oil covered one like the one on the back side of the intake But after that screw is loose over here on this side, and you've got all of these eight millimeters out of the top, you can pull these eight millimeters completely out. Somebody's already been in here apparently because this hole is all wallowed out. What I just did there was pried that bracket in the front against, I pried against the intake slightly to be able to get the lip past the two bolts that hold it on.
sure there's another wiring harness connected down on the bottom side. The wiring harness for the throttle body is what's connected there. It has a bunch of Christmas trees all over the place. So be mindful of them when taking it off. So don't go jerking things out. I'm going to go ahead and remove this out of the way just so it's not here. This is an 8 millimeter. side of it there's a 10 mil on the back side and then uh, grommet in the bottom there I take every single bolt completely out of this if I can bolts down there. But it still doesn't want to come out. These grommets hold on for dear life. Alright, now we can go ahead and take this air box out since or the the resonator out oh yeah there is a air temp sensor mounted to the side of this so be careful not to break it there's also a wiring harness that goes into it all right last but not least that uh, plug for the throttle body was not a Christmas tree dump all the poop off of it when this goes back together it will have to be relearned doesn't look like anything has been chewed on here But it still has a misfire. None of the wires for the computer are chewed into it. The computer is over here on this side, tucked by the brake booster. And she had mentioned having white smoke when driving down the road as well she thought that she may have <coughs> a blown head gasket <clears throat> I can't confirm or deny that yet since I have not verified it but you can look down in the cylinders for the most part through the intake I can't really see these front three very well. <coughs> Got an oil leak on the back side of the engine on the top of the valve cover. May very well have a plugged up PCV. That would be the only logical reason why that would happen. more especially where it's coming from unless just the seal is bad which is possible too well 
Well, visibly, I don't see anything wrong. Reconnect the battery. You go inside and scan. This does use the the special plug. Let me go grab that. All right. So this specific model is not behind the radio. It's not behind the dash. It is here. can be a little tricky to get out so be careful not to score anything too bad Face plate may pop off of different parts, but it'll be fine. It'll go back on just the same way it popped off. What's crazy is I've already had this thing off about 10 times. This time it's almost like it's glued back into place. Once you finally get it out, make sure to pop the faceplate back in if it didn't pop itself back in. You can see here on the back side of it, all of the orange clips, that is what holds it on. You're essentially only prying on the bottom to be able to gain access to one side or the other. Then your security module is way back in the back back there. It can be a little tricky to get unplugged and plugged back in. But with a little patience, you'll be able to get it. Right, there's the left plug. Here's the right plug. This uses the 12, what is it, 12, 8, yeah, 12 plus 8, then this just plugs right into the wiring harness, bypasses the security module, shouldn't even have to turn the key on, but I think I might have to, I'll know in just a minute. If I do, it'll be fine. I can clear the codes out and relearn everything after. Let's see if she's acquired any extra codes that aren't related to what I just took apart.
a little slow. Now, if it doesn't auto van, then I know, yeah, it doesn't auto van. So I will have to turn the key on. Key is in place. Okay, see, stop moving. Yes, we know the throttle body's not connected. This is a Chrysler Pacifica. Uh, I don't know how to turn the radio off. Come on now. Oh, well, it says it's a 2020, but it was manufactured after the six month. This car only has 87,435 miles on it. Okay, internet, you can come to work today.
The battery's gonna be dead before it even gets all the way up there. Download failed. Please try again. Okay, let's retry then. fix this and then start recording again I ended up hitting stop by accident so there may be a slight jump in the video okay so if this is a cradled engine or a transverse whatever they call this this is the front of the vehicle so this would be the front of the engine that would be left this would be right so this would be two, four, six, one, three, five. And cylinder five is here. And there looks like nothing to be concerned with there. So let me grab my tripod, set it back up. You'll probably see a transition in this as well since I had to stop it and start again. But I'm gonna go ahead and take out cylinder fives ignition coil and sparky plug take a pick angled pick doesn't matter if it's 45 or a 90 get in there and pop that tab loose now in my experience with these newer style plugs it's easier going from the front side if you can get in from the front side pull the tab up and pull it back that is also a 10 millimeter so I'll get something back there and get it out the only thing we're looking for is to be broken loose keep the bolt with the ignition coil too although I don't know if there is uh, I think it's actually going to stay with it anyways it feels like it's locked in there oh here we go I'm going to smack my hand doesn't smell like gas I'll grab a 5 8 to get down in there Be right back. I gotta find the five eights. All right. So while I was waiting to start the video back up, I looked at the degas bottle or the overflow tank, whatever you want to call it. It's completely empty. So I will be checking all of the cylinders 
which means that I won't be recording that part of it because I use my phone in order to boroscope. But from now until then, I will be recording. <clears throat> and I don't intend on doing the ratchet the whole entire way. cylinder five spark plug it's pretty nasty trying to see if I can see any engine cooling anywhere That's the only one way to do it is to do it, I guess. Get all these taken loose. Get all the sparky plugs out. The front's gonna be a little bit trickier since that bracket is in the way. <clears throat> Not entirely sure where it mounts at. I see a couple bolts, but I think the others are mounted behind the EGR uh, flow tube. Just so everyone knows, this video is mainly for diagnosing purposes. They have an extended warranty on here. Make sure when you take these off, you remember where they are or mark where they came from. They These are factory, and again, they're only 80-something thousand miles, so... I'm going to lay them out in the exact order that they came out of the engine on my trailer. cylinder five in the same place <clears throat>
and then my last one I will be using to take the sparky plugs out. Oil all over this. I was wondering if it was coolant because it's extremely wet and it may very well be coolant. snot out of them taking them out or putting them in really should use a manual ratchet but my time is running out here loads of oil and the number one cylinder all right so we're going to take this one go back down into the cylinders and pull out all the spark plugs and lay them with their corresponding ig ignition coils <clears throat> a couple of these look really good cylinder 5 put it with the cylinder 5 ignition coil that looks horrible cylinder 3 looks great <clears throat> cylinder 1 covered in oil just the way cylinder 5 was Alright, those are some extremely small holes, you can see in three, I can't see in the other three, but I'll grab a boroscope and see what I come up with. Alright, so I didn't finish recording me putting all this back together, but it is officially back together. And I'm going to go through, clear everything, and relearn everything. This is the longest process, so I will pause it and come back once it's fully initiated. All right, I'm back. I haven't even cleared anything yet, and there's a bunch of things gone. Well, there's no good place to set this where there's no reflection, so. So, ABS, radio, partronics, and radio frequency hub. So, we will look first, and then clear. Read codes. And proper power down of in information. Uh, that was probably for me. Okay, let's go back. Go back again. Quick erase. There'll be another radio code. So I'm still getting a bit of a shutter, but I also did spray brake parts cleaner down into the intake, so I may be pulling all of that out first.
see if it'll allow me to do a misfire chart come on it's a little warm out sweat running down the old noggin over here misfire data Well, the good news is cylinder five is not misfiring anymore. It does smell pretty bad. I want to see if there is a coolant leak. Doesn't appear to be. Alright, so I've pressurized it back up to 17 to 19 PSI. It's slowly working its way back down. So either it does have a coolant leak or it has a bad head gasket or a bad pressure tank. But as of right now, I'm not seeing anything leaking. Just watch the coolant temp hand for a second. Live data. Get down here to the engine temperature sensor. This thing should open up at about 195 to 200 degrees I mean it really should open sooner than that but Chrysler likes to put these things on the edge so currently the engine coolant temp sensor is reading that it's 134.6 degrees intake air temperature is 100 degrees so if that tells you how hot it is outside I'm gonna go release pressure from the degas bottle. Jesus, you scared me to death. This still is 17 psi, so this is one of the best pulls anybody could ever get. It allows you to somewhat burp the air out of the system. And now it's flowing, and you can see inside of there maybe that there's bubble. That should be a steady stream going in. And once it fully opens, the cooling fan should kick on, hopefully. If it doesn't, then I know I have other issues. But she did say that it blew out white smoke. So we shall see. There was no coolant in any of the cylinders. I didn't see it white smoke whenever I started it up now revving it make sure all the air is burped out cap it drive it down the road of course after putting this monstrosity back together let's see try to put that back up here I think that's where I had it the last time it seemed to sit pretty good
force it to hurry up. As most of y'all probably know, the rev limiter is only 3,000 RPM for park. Oh, jumped up two degrees. Let's see, I know a way to speed it up. Cut the air conditioner on. That may actually slow it down a little bit, but it'll heat back up pretty quick. So that says that it's at 167. This is almost halfway already. This says 174. This says 174. Did they change? They used to be 100 and almost 90 degrees. That would be nice. Take the Pentastar off of his deathbed. Pull back down below. The computator here. I want you to go back. Jesus. Actually went down even further. It was 183 degrees just now. Obviously, misfire is not on this screen. There we go. I am an idiot. Alright, so it's 
currently not misfiring. That's at 3,000 RPM, still not misfiring. Good! I guess that means I fixed it. 